Okay, so what's up there guys and welcome back to Dig It Detecting. Welcome also to this beautiful morning we have here in front of us. It is just amazing. We've been having some awful weather lately. So to get out this morning and see blue skies is just perfect. Perfect to get on that detector anyway. That is exactly what we're doing. We are visiting an old school ground here. Still in current use today. However, it does date back to the late 1800s. So it's got some great history here. We've had permission for quite a while. About three years now to detect this place. We found heaps of wonderful silver coins out on the back oval here uh, which is not currently used today you know it used to be used back in the olden days and not really such today and more this oval that we're sitting on now so anyway we've been humming around here for the last 10 minutes and look at that we've got our first coin our first silver coin i should say we've dug a few little pieces of rubbish just prior uh, so it's not my first target at all uh, for the day however that is our first coin and a cracker cracker uh, early sixpence there so 1926 i think i can see let's give him a bit of a clean up let's see if we can see the day a little bit better he looks to be in quite nice condition too so there you go 1926 has said the sun is out and so are the silver coins so awesome stuff our first silver coin for the day our first coin in general uh, and it be a silver uh, I will uh, also going to uh, go through our settings quickly here today. We are using the little six inch coil. We are going to be cherry picking because uh, I do not have all the time in the world today. I have to be at work at 2 p.m. and it's already 11. So we are going to show the settings quickly, uh, run through them, and then we're going to keep on digging. Uh, see how many more coins we can pop out in the next, what, three hours before we've got to get to work. Rightio, so as mentioned, we're going to give a quick run through the settings. So just what I'm using here today, this is all pretty standard stuff. So we're going to go straight past noise cancel there. We will go back to him. That is the last thing that we do. So straight past him to begin with. Ground balance, I leave on zero. Our volume is on 23. We'll leave him there. There's a dog over the back fence there. I don't want to upset when I'm in pinpoints. We don't want him too loud. And normally if I was out in a paddock though, the volume would be on 25. Vo uh, threshold level, we leave alone once again at uh, zero a target tone the next one uh, you look you can run I have mentioned this before you can run 50 tones there's a lot more going on uh, you can also run two tones where there's only two separate tones for all those different targets uh, however I like to run five that's sort of where it's at for me so 50 tones would be great to learn however there you, you know you just got to understand that there's a lot more uh, there to understand basically having 50 different separate tones so except reject once again uh, you know basically what I said there before we are time limited today uh, it is 11 o'clock on the watch so we've got what maybe two hours three hours at best and then I have to be at work so we are going to be running uh, from the, the 18 basically upwards 18 through to 40 However, in saying that, I'll just go back to the main menu there and see how I've been opting to run the full screen. Uh, that comes in just with the horseshoe button there down below. Uh, so, you know, you can see I've got 18 to 40 selected. Uh, everything else cancelled out. However, when I want, uh, we, you know, when the machine goes a bit quiet or I'm just fishing for other targets, lower signals, I can bump that horseshoe button in there and dig everything sort of, um, you know, from zero upwards. So I wouldn't go digging those negative numbers. They're generally rust. Anyway, back to the accept reject. As I said, 18 to 40, uh, we'll be using the horseshoe when needed. So I just thought I'd show you that quickly. Recovery speed, whoop, we're on iron bias first there. Uh, we'll go back to recovery speed, which is normally what it should hit on first. Uh, I just had it changed over there. So recovery speed, this guy is set on eight. This is quite a trashy area. Remember I said 18, look, look about 1870s, uh, this school opened, so quite a trashy area. Uh, we need to work through all that trash, hence why I've got the 6 inch coil on, and hence why I'm running that recovery speed nice and high at 8. I will say though, if you were getting too much interference, uh, you can drop that down a bit, you know, 5, 6, 7 even, uh, and knock out a bit of that interference. So this is quite a, um, uh, not a very noisy sight, so I don't have to really worry about that too much. Holding the settings button, we will take you back to iron bias mode there, FE, uh, don't run the F2 uh, setup, I just run the original iron bias FE mode, and I like to have mine set at zero. If I find that I'm hitting on too many false signals or rusty nails, I will simply bump it up uh, to one, uh, if, maybe if, uh, even two, uh, generally one. So I like to run it on zero though, uh, and look, whew, I'll just take a breath. You may find you will dig uh, a couple more rusty nails with it set so low at zero. However, 
However, that is basically allowing, uh, setting it so low at zero or even one, uh, it is allowing the machine to not mask any other signals. So if you had a rusty nail, uh, a bottle top, a bit of lead, uh, a bit of foil, whatever, and a coin in between them all, uh, which, you know, let's face it, there's just rubbish everywhere, and the coins, you know, there's no rhyme or reason where they are, so a very good chance it could be beside other trash or a rusty nail. If you run that recovery speed too high, you will be simply masking that signal. You'll be telling the detector, I do not want to hear the trash, therefore masking the signal. So good, uh, good tip, as said, Keep that iron bias down as low as you can withstand it, therefore allowing uh, that machine to open itself up and not, uh, not mask any of those signals amongst the trash. So that is about it. Let's, uh, said uh, we we're gonna run through that quickly. That wasn't quickly at all. Uh, let's now do a noise cancel. As I said, that is the last thing uh, that we do. So we're gonna zoom you out. We'll stand you up. Oh, look, we found a shovel. We found a tiger digger. We'll stand him up, waist tight, and you'll notice I um, don't leave the coil like that when you uh, stand him up. You want the coil facing outwards, uh, vertical. So stand him up and kapow! Give him a noise cancel. Uh, my settings were already set too, and we found that nice sixpence. Now we're going to find more. Back to main menu, and uh, we are good to go. So let's move on for that sixpence now. Let's see what else we can find. Who knows? Fingers crossed for a florin. Rightio, so we've got our next hole dug. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more tricky today. Normally I'm using the Tiger XL shovel uh, and I can sort of film, dig, uh, talk away as I go. This is going to be a little bit harder today because I'm using a handheld little Tiger digger. So ripper, ripper little handheld shovel to use when out detecting. It cuts an absolute great plug. And look at that, I've been using that for what, two, uh, two three years now. And uh, not a scratch, not a dint in it, and not even a bend. There's a few scratches, I should say. Not a bend, though, is what I meant to say. Uh, it is just perfect. I love my Tiger stainless steel products. Literally lifetime tools. There we go. This guy was a very sketchy signal. And I'm sort of thinking, yeah, listen to that. Sort of thinking that we were hitting down onto rust. And that was sort of, sort of what I was saying. You can dig those few extra rusty targets, you know, the, the detector sort of uh, falses out on it uh, because the iron bias is so low down at zero, the detector may false out uh, thinking that it's a good target. However, generally it is rust. And look, I can sometimes pick them and I know that I am even digging down to rust. However, I still do it because the off chance that it's not rust uh, and it is a silver coin, well, let's face it, that is a bit of a win, isn't it? So... And that has happened to me so many times over the years, you know, uh, digging down thinking, oh bugger, uh, this, this sounded so iffy, so sketchy, I don't know whether I should have even dug this. And, um, you know, it turns out to be a nice old, a nice old silver, or even a florin, so you just have to dig a bit of the trash to get the treasure, and uh, I'm quite happy to do that. So, anyway, bit of rust that one, let's move you on to the next, as I said, hopefully for that big florin. So as mentioned, we are cherry picking a lot of those higher signals today. You can see I've knocked out the horseshoe button at the moment. Uh, he's, uh, you know, basically we're digging from everything from 18 to 40. Uh, however, I will still dig a few of those lower signals uh, if I'm struggling to find these nice high pitch tones, uh, which generally, let's face it, uh, is the best stuff to dig. So let's give this guy a dig. We might try and do him one-handed. And try and get this guy on camera because he's probably going to be a little two cent coin jumping around 23 24 there however we could be tricked once again uh, that little sixpence there that we first got oh this is a horrible plug uh, that little sixpence there that we first got off the bat uh, it was just that at 22 23 jumping around quite away you would honestly have thought that he was going to be a little one cent coin or even a bottle top there he is in the hole it's definitely not going to be rubbish, this guy. He's definitely going to be a coin. He's still in the back wall there. I cannot see what's going on. Oh dear, we've made a mess of this plug. We'll have to clean him up. We do have permission here, but uh, wherever I go, I always like to dig clean because I always like to be welcomed back to these sites and never be, never lose that permission. Well, now we're just playing with it, aren't we? Let's get him out of there. I rang a lady last night for a permission that I gained whilst at work 
Uh, there we go. We were tricked, Basil. We've got a bottle top. Mellow yellow. Maybe not. Pineapple. Something pineapple lava. Anyway, rang a lady there last night and I was supposed to be going to detecting across the... Uh, there was an old house site across the road from an old pub. Uh, we're supposed to be detecting that today. Uh, early this morning, I rang her there last night and she said, Oh, look, I spoke to my husband and uh, look, uh, I think we might give it a miss. So never mind in six years uh, detecting and, you know, hundreds of permissions that I've managed to gain. I think I've only ever had about, what, half a dozen say no. So I don't let that um, try and spoil the party. We just move on to the next, don't we? 21 on the Equinox, this guy. I know what this is. A nice little $2 coin. Our first $2 coin for today. Wow, we are getting rich, aren't we? That is awesome. Uh, I, uh, I reckon um, Zave would have liked to have dug this one up. The other day, I took him out just quickly, and we went to a playground there, uh, the, the Bark Chip Playground near a football oval. This site is like gold. It just regenerates every month. You can go out there and dig 20-odd bucks. And went there the other day there with Zave and Dominic, and um, we hummed around in the playground for probably an hour, and I pulled $13. Zave managed to get $6.40, so uh, he did exceptionally well. Uh, awesome. And then he went and spent it on lollies, didn't he? We've got our next coin. Look out. And it's another gold coin. This time it's a $1 coin. Isn't that awesome? There's $3 into the pouch already. And we've only been here for, what, 10, 15 minutes? And we've also got that little silver sixpence. So we're going to continue running up along the playground. Uh, we probably might do a few laps in the wood chip, actually. Uh, seems though I really have not done too much there. And then what I want to do is get up along the footpath here and just work this little area for the next couple of hours with that awesome little six-inch coil. See what else we can find. Rightio, so I tell you what, we have worked bloody hard for this next coin that we've got in the hole down there. Uh, let me just show you quickly, we sort of were up over there and we uh, were working in the wood chips, chasing the gold coins, and uh, we were going to wander off and work that next section of the ground, that little green grass area which we did, uh, and then we got round the back of the buildings, round the back of the sports sheds, round the trees, round the tennis courts, we just went everywhere, and then I thought about, I thought, where was the most coins found here? Where were uh, the most productive areas? So, and one of them being right out in this paddock here, uh, just uh, above this fence, or be, uh, beyond the fence there, and also uh, working around uh, this little section here. So look, I don't know why it's the most productive area, it just is, and uh, it's paid off. Just thinking that and wandering over here, it has definitely paid off. We have our next coin and our next silver coin. Everything else has been bloody rubbish. So up until this little guy, let's give him a clean up and let's see what he is. He's a little uh, a little thrippence there. I'm not sure if he's an English thrippence, which he could easily be because there's a lot of them. Oh, yes, he is too. There's a lot of them that have come out from uh, this site in particular. So... There he is, 1905, a little English threepence. What a cracker of a coin. He was a, a 2021 a singing up on the Equinox 800. And because he was under that big tree root there, I had uh, had pretty high hopes. And look at that. He's been sitting there for some, what, 100 odd years until we found him here, uh, now today. So isn't that so awesome? Let's give him a clean up on this side. Sometimes uh, thinking outside the box there though, you know, like I, I would have still been... Uh, puddling around over the back there. There he is, Edward on the back. Uh, I would have still been puddling around over the back there near the school and, uh, you know, probably getting very, very frustrated just digging a lot of trash. Uh, but walking over here and then sort of thinking where were the most productive areas, let's work those again with the little six inch coil because that has never been ran here and let's see how we go. And bingo, we, uh, we nailed it. We've got our next little silver coin. Wow, awesome. Awesome. Okay, let's throw him in the bag. Let's stop talking about him because we are going to run out of time. It was 11 o'clock sort of when we started. It's now 20 to 12. I've got probably whew, a little bit over one hour left to dig and we still have not found that florin yet either. So let's see how we go and we might even get out into the back uh, oval paddock there. That was the secondary oval or originally probably this fence line was never there and uh, this whole, whole back uh, oval here was one in together or one as a whole. So we might get out there and uh, see out what else we can find for this afternoon. Hey, he does it again. Look at that. We're on a silver strike now. That is bloody awesome. Our next coin, and it be a little silver sixpence. How incredible. Let's flip that over. You can see the dirt impression there. Let's get rid of him now into the hole. 
let's have a look at the coin instead uh, instead of the dirt i just love finding the silver coins as I said the sun is out and so are the silvers that is just magnificent so 1960 something i don't know 62 63 is quite a later one compared to some of the other ones that we've found here in the past so i think that's what he is 1962 uh, but uh, however whatever date he is that doesn't matter that is our third silver coin as i said we're on a bit of a silver silver streak now so uh, we just got our last one our last little thrippence just behind us about 10 meters ago so who knows maybe the coins are getting bigger maybe another 10 meters and we'll snag that florin Okay, so we've finally done it. We've finally got ourselves another coin. You just see me humming up and down, up and down, gritting out this little area with a little a six inch coil, something I've never done before. And there we have it. We've got a penny too. Log out. We have not found a penny at all today. Uh, all three silver coins and not one copper coin coming out. So there we have it, 1920 this guy, uh, quite bad condition. He's got a lot of that copper verdigris cancer going on. It looks like someone may have nicked him on the back there too. I have no idea who did that. So anyway, that is awesome. Our first penny uh, in the, the school paddock here, or in the back oval I should say. Next we're going to either jump over into the, uh, the old back oval well, what I was even thinking, uh, give it that uh, we've got the six inch coil on, we should really get in amongst that very trashy sports oval beside the school here and see what else we can pluck out with that little sniper. Uh, so I think that's what we might do. A few more minutes spent here detecting, uh, just finishing off this last grid and then we'll either see you in the back oval paddock or in the sports oval uh, paddock there. Rightio, so I've decided to step over into the old recreation reserve here now. Uh, it is still currently used today. Uh, however, it uh, basically dates back about as old as this school too. So they would have been right beside each other, surveyed and uh, allotted and occupied from the very beginning. So we uh, were gritting up along there. We've just walked straight over, jumped the fence, and we've wandered our way over to the track here pretty much right in front of my car too and look what we've just uh, hit on we've hit on our next coin uh, being a little silver coin i tell you what uh, it is definitely going to pay a uh, pay off working this uh, trashy area around the sports oval for the last hour that we have here today so how awesome is that uh, he just comes straight out literally within two seconds of stepping over that fence so bloody bloody awesome let's give him a clean up this is what our fourth silver coin oh <gasps> he's a 1921 too uh, we better check for the uh, the 1921 and 22 stamped over date so whenever you find these uh, dated 1921 always clean them up and uh you know clean them up lightly and uh, basically try and get a, a look at the date there the one and the two uh, the 1921 was sometimes stamped with the 22 uh, so they call it the stamped over date a very very rare rare coin and an error coin too that um, should not be out in circulation so very special stuff i don't think this guy is that uh, 21 22 stamped over date however what a cracker of a coin as i said our fourth silver coin here this morning so awesome stuff into the pouch let's hope i'm going to run probably that way and then maybe jump over the track and run back that way to the car let's hope that uh the next you know what 30 minutes 40 minutes is just as successful what a bloody ripper 22 23 26 hell there's a few numbers going on there there's some nice depth about that target though uh, so he's got my attention straight away and uh, a nice signal even though he's jumping around quite away that doesn't faze me uh, just as long as the tone is there and the depth is there uh, depth is there which it certainly is so let's pinpoint him you notice i uh, went in and out of pinpoint uh, mode there the first um, time i hit the pinpoint button it screamed at me so uh, taking him out of pinpoint mode button there pushing the button again i should say uh, and then going back into it again, it decreases that target. It decreases down the size of the diameter of the uh, the pinpointing range there. So I do it in all my videos, a bit of a trick that I've shared over the years. I tell you what, it works really, really, really well. And, uh, you know, a target goes from, you know, if you've got a six inch coil, obviously the target goes from six inches uh, in diameter down to the target of the actual uh, or the size of the actual target, I should say. Let's hope this is another coin, because he sounded like he was um, on that second round there. He sounded like he pinpointed quite nice, just like a coin would anyway. Let's get around the back of him. 
don't know who, who hit that penny there before, but we don't want to go hitting any more coins, do we? Especially considering most of them have been silvers today, which has been awesome. Didn't expect to come out and get so many silver coins today. Uh, from this site, I expected to get one or two uh, and a heap of pennies. Instead, we've got one penny and a heap of silvers. An awesome ratio today. Oh, there he is. The ratio is going to thin out now or going to even itself up. There's our next coin. He's not a silver, he's a copper. He's a copper penny. Someone's taken a bite again. And uh, it's a Commonwealth penny. You can just see the ring around. Uh, we will not clean him up too much, make these pants any dirtier. Uh, there we go, though. We'll clean him up once home and uh, show you a look properly. So another penny, a Commonwealth penny. That is our second penny. And what, four silver coins. So uh, I don't really want to even the ratio up. Ideally, what I want to find is a big florin. It seems to me, though, that little, um, little six-inch coil just loves finding the little silvers, the little silvers that have easily been missed because this site has been detected by me before uh, even me and a few friends have brought a few friends out here to detect it and we did find florins what have you so they have been picked up before uh, that's not to say there's not more here however we may struggle to find them uh, with that little six inch coil they might be hiding a bit deeper we may have to put the 11 or the 15 inch coil and get back uh, in the oval there in the school oval and who knows maybe even hit on one then let's keep going well, we all know what that one is then, don't we? Have a listen to that. The double jumper. Such a good tone, isn't it? That's going to be a $1 coin. 22 on the surface. He's jumping around a little bit more there too. The 22 is the main number that it's uh, fixating on. I dare say it's going to be a $1 coin. Sitting on the surface there. Oh, look at that. We don't even need the pinpointer. I should have just uh, peeled away the grass with my hands. There he is, laying on top. Let's remove him. I said we do not need that pinpointer. You can see where he's been hiding in that hole there, killing all the grass. Isn't that awesome? What's that? $4 now, a $2 coin, and two $1 coins. So, tell you what, uh, the old uh, school site uh, regenerates pretty quick over there. And a few of the old recreation reserves that we go to, uh, just like this one, also regenerate quite quite nicely and quite quickly especially now COVID's over and uh, football's back on we will be getting rich soon won't we listen to that one a 25 29 look at the depth four four bars of depth i can see there very very nice let's give him a dig let's find him pinpoint first and then let's give him a dig on camera I can hear some birds fighting over in the trees there too. Some uh, magpies and uh, probably mudlarks, I think, uh, carrying on and fighting up in the top of the trees there, uh, swooping each other and clicking their beaks. They sound like, sound crazy. Let's give them a dig, as I said. This is going to be a coin, and I'm pretty certain it's gonna be a silver coin, just because of that depth. The depth was uh, probably one of the deepest coins I've dug here today, uh, showing by the indicator there, uh, four bars of depth which is uh, exactly what I chase, basically. You know, that, um, as I said before, I'm not too worried about the numbers jumping around. Uh, more so, I'm listening for that tone. Uh, is it that nice, high-pitched tone? And if it is the nice, high-pitched tone, how many bars of depth does it have? And uh, generally, you know, indicating that it uh, has some really good depth indicates that it is an old coin. It's been buried for quite a way, quite a long time. So that's what... Um, you know, that's what I'm chasing when I go out detecting. I, uh, I don't mind digging the, the $1 and $2 coins. However, ideally, I am chasing the history. I'm chasing the older uh, older stuff, if I can. We got him out. Have we? No? Yes? No? No. He's still down there. I'm confusing myself. I thought we had him out then. Who knows? Maybe this is not a coin. I'm pretty certain it is. Maybe it's a bit of rubbish and it's breaking up in the hole. What is going on? Oh, there he is. I can spot him. It is a bloody coin. Look at that. Oh, dear. There's our fifth silver coin. Oh, that is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I remember I got a groat from here, too. Uh, 1837 groat. Uh, so every time I see a little thrippins come out, uh, it reminds me of that groat that I found. Oh, dear. Uh, there's George on the back. So this is going to be a nice a coat of arms. Early little thrippins, just like that 1921 there uh, that we found before. This guy's a few a few years earlier though, 
1918 isn't that just cracker and that little six inch coil i tell you what is just a sniper on the silver coins if anybody out there is sort of wondering oh you know do i buy the six inch coil do it i highly recommend it <laughs> it's amazing the amount of silver coins i've found lately i think um uh, in the last what fortnight let's say uh, i've unearthed over a hundred silver coins with that little six inch sniper coil and mind you uh, i've very i've you know i've really worked for it and been trying to get out as much as i can and hitting some amazing sites too it's not like i've just been going uh, to the public park you know every day and uh, having the same results i've been uh, trying to get to different sites and uh, some that have really really good potential and have been productive in the past and trying to clean them up uh, once again with that little six inch sniper coil and it's been working wonders so uh you know if <laughs> If there's sites that you've got, you've been hunting for years with the 11 inch coil or the 15 and you think, you know, there's nothing else left there, uh, I'll tell you what, get that little 6 inch coil and uh, you will change your mind quite quickly. I mean, we've ran the 11 inch all the way up and down here, uh, me, uh, myself, friends, you know, uh, <laughs> it's amazing how many times this site out here has been detected and we've snagged, what, uh, a silver a gold coin uh, and now another silver coin that did not take much at all who knows what we're going to find in the next what 20 meters and then we're going to jump across as I said make our way back to the car so by the time we get back to the car we should have what 28 silver coins i reckon how awesome is that ho ho 25 26 27 i've seen those numbers a couple of times today uh, i've put the uh, record button on and went oh check this out here's our florin well this could be doing just the same to me uh, and it could end up being a bit of uh, rubbish like the last few or even uh, a, um, a shotgun shell like a couple have been also so I uh, tell you what if this is a florin though it's going to be well worth the film that's why I've hit the go button and uh, we are recording away so let's see what we've got 26 27 normally it means florin numbers could we be so lucky could we, could we, could we? Um, no! <laughs> 26, 27 jumping around, uh, even back to the 23. It can also be a two cent coin. I say that now like I knew it, but um, yeah, basically it can. So I did sort of know that. 20, uh, 27, 28, 29 uh, jumping around quite a way. It's generally the one cent coin. A 23, 25, 27, you know, uh, jumping around quite a way again. However, the lower 20 numbers uh, can also be a two cent coin. Let me show you. I'll stand up. 25, 26, 23, 22, oh I did see a 29 there, he's out of uh, out of the ground now so he's ringing up a little bit different so in the ground as I said jumping around 23, 27, 20, yeah 22, all those funny numbers 25, 26 so you never can pick them, uh, one and two cent coins and you've got to dig through them uh, to get the better stuff anyway uh, to get the pre decimals so that's okay we'll take you on to the next. 21, 22, 23, this little guy, and uh, it's happened again. You'll never guess what we've got. Another little thrippence. This guy is a little bit later though. You can see the wheat stalks on him. Let's peel him off there. <laughs> that is awesome. I uh, dug him quite expectingly too, or unexpectedly I should say. I honestly thought it may have been a bottle top. It did not have great depth about it. However, I suppose you've got to think too, this is a later silver, so he's probably only been buried for, what, 50, 60 years, as opposed to some of those earlier ones that would have been uh, in the ground for well over 100 years uh, now. So, uh, really cool. I thought he was a bottle top. That's why I did not hit the camera. But there he is, a 1940, uh, 1943. I'm getting my words confused. And he's got a little S there for San Francisco. Uh, so that means this guy was minted over in America in San Francisco during the uh, the World War II. And 1943 fits the date perfectly. They were basically helping supplement our coins, minting some of Australia's currency uh, during World War II period. They minted them in San Francisco. Uh, you'll often see uh, the D for Denver. Uh, so really, really cool. Little things like that. I just love keeping an eye out for. We had another target somewhere around here too. So we best um, stand up, give him a look, and see if we uh, can't snag another silver. What a ripper. So there's another target there, a 17. He's only got one bar of depth on him though. That's not the target that I was looking at. Uh, that's where the last little thrippence just come out uh, right there, the 1943. Uh, we do have 
can see that one there though we do have a 15 and a 16 right beside that little wheat thrippence which look he rang up pretty high 21 22 23 uh, however some will have known or some will have seen in my videos a 15 and a 16 it can also mean a little wheat thrippence so let me grab this hand shovel little hand digger here and we're going to dig in because let's face it if a wheat thrippence come out from there and we've got a 16 right there I tell you what, that could be part of a coin spill. Let's find out, shall we? Let's give him a dig. He might be a little bit deep. I might try and struggle to get through this ground. It's starting to toughen up as we uh, make our way to the back of the oval. Oh, there he goes. We popped the plug. So let's, uh, fingers crossed, let's hope this is also a sixpence, uh, threepence, like that little guy there. Uh, it'd be nicer if it was a sixpence, wouldn't it? Double the money for half the price. There he is, in the back, in the back. We're on to him, we've found him. We just need to unearth him. So cool, uh, finding all these silver coins. And I have quite a collection, as you can imagine now. Hundreds and hundreds and uh, hundreds, I think over a thousand silver coins now. It's just phenomenal. And uh, pennies, I think I've got about quadruple that. Uh, four or five thousand pennies at home that I've dug uh, over the years. So I know, it's crazy. Um, but I'm going to keep digging them, I'm going to keep unearthing them. And uh, what I will do too, as I said before, they'll, a lot of them will go back in the ground for others to enjoy. You know, I'm not, I'm not greedy. I don't need to dig and keep all these coins. What I'd really like to see uh, is other people enjoying finding them also. So that's what I'll do. I'll throw them all back in the ground one day. Or spread them out for a competition hunt or something fun and exciting. And uh, enjoy seeing everybody pull them out of the ground also. So, what do we got? Oh dear, <laughs> there we go. We were tricked, unfortunately. Just a shotgun shell. Never mind, never mind. Shotgun shells are a great way to tell the age of the site or uh, what was happening uh, at that site at the time anyway. So, not sure we can see too much on this guy. There must have been quite a bit of shooting taking place here at one stage. That's about the fifth or sixth shotgun shell I have found here today. Uh, a couple of triple two or 22 shells too over in the schoolyard uh, right near the goalpost. So someone was having a good old shootout and having a cracking time. I wonder what they were shooting at. Okay, so there he is, our very last coin as we make our way back to the car. We've jumped over the track. All we need to do is walk to the car now and uh, we are going to finish it off. So this is probably going to finish uh, us off and be our last target for today, uh, being that it is a nice pre-decimal, a beautiful half penny, 1955 kangaroo half penny. And uh, I tell you what, that is our first penny today, or our first half penny today, I should say. We have not found any more, uh, just one or two uh, Commonwealth pennies there. So awesome stuff, our last target. Now let's do a conclusion and uh, see how many silver coins or how many coins in general we've got in the bag for today. And we'll see you at home and uh, we'll give you a look. Rightio, so that is about it for us today, guys. We have you in the back room now, all the trash and treasure laid out, ready to give you a look through what we did today. I tell you what, we had a bloody cracker of a day too. Now let's take you through and look at the rubbish first, like we like to do uh, always, and show you some of the items that we were basically hitting on uh, whilst looking for the coins. So, few rusty nails there. We didn't do too bad. A uh, few pull tabs, looking for the wheat thrippences, and a few bottle tops. So, let's not worry about the trash. That'll all be uh, saved sorted and scrapped at a later date and let's focus now on what's the most important things the coins uh, the 1920 full one penny on the left the 1912 full one penny on the right unfortunately not in the greatest condition let's jump over the silvers in fact let's pick this guy up the last coin that we found there was the 1955 kangaroo half penny in quite good condition he still needs a bit of a clean up on the back there as you can see we just sort of clean up the front to present the front there so and get the date off so let's go down to the bottom let's miss the silver coins once again a two two cent coins below they also need a bit of a clean up a two one cent coins to the right hand side of that uh, quite funny actually we're working in double pairs today up above there we've got two two dollar coins that makes four and two one dollar coins that makes another two dollars so we are what six cents richer and six uh 
six dollars richer there you go so awesome stuff awesome i had to get my maths right then anyway 1926 a little sixpence there beautiful condition cleaned up quite nice i'm very very shaky sorry 1962 a sixpence beside that guy and down below we had the 1918 threepence the 1943 and the 1921 and my favorite though uh, of course would have to be the early english silver here and 1905 just an absolute cracker cracker of a coin any english silver uh, i just love finding so king edward on the back uh, what a bloody ripper so anyway guys that is about it for us today as i said we had a fantastic day hunting the coins we've got so many wonderful pre-decimal coins six silver coins on top of that uh, and only that much trash so awesome stuff awesome hunt and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one so hit that like comment subscribe button below and uh, i hope to see you on uh, our future adventures so cheers guys happy hunting we'll catch you next time Okay, so what's up there guys and Okay, so what's up there guys and welcome back to Dig It Detecting. Welcome also to a cracker, cracker morning. We have been having some absolute horrible weather lately, so it's really nice to see some blue skies out above the head there. So Okay. Okay. Rightio, so something that I have not been doing lately and uh, something that I've been requested of a few times uh, which I would like to do is show a bit more of my setup uh, as I'm hunting, you know, before I start hunting. So we're going to run through it very quickly. Uh, a lot of people will have seen this before in the past. Uh, for those that haven't or, you know, those that would like to know what I run uh, to find all these coins quickly, we're going to run through it very quickly. So, so as... <coughs>
Check it out, check it out. We've got ourselves our Florin, I think. Have a look at this baby. 26, 27. 26, 25, couple of bars of depth. I thought I'd better come and grab you and show us, uh, show you the Florin coming out, which is what I've been wanting all day today. Have a listen to that, would ya? That's a Florin, let's go after him. I am hoping it's a Florin anyway. Oh dear, we could be nailing exactly what we wanted. As I said, all I've wanted is a Florin and the coins seem to be getting a little bit bigger, don't they? Fingers crossed. Florin, I think I've dug about 60, uh, uh, sorry 60, about 40 odd Florins this year. So far, so let's see if we can make it 41. No. <laughs> Bugger. <laughs> a shotgun shell. That's not a florin. Never mind. Rightio, so we've finally done it. All that work up and down, up and down. Hey, you would not believe it. We've got our first coin straight out into the oval here. We literally come out of the school there. We jump straight over the fence. I uh, walked straight to that target right there and you'll never guess what it is. Well, some might anyway. Let's, uh, let's not pick him up. Let's just go straight down on him and have a look. Uh, we've got ourselves another cracker little thrippens. I don't know what he is yet. Coat of arms, uh, th uh, co uh, wheat. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. La -la 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 -la. I'm getting tongue-tied. Rightio, so we are in the oval now. In the o... Of course we're in the oval. Oh dear, what a long week. So that could be our next one, quite easily. 24, 25. Hello all there. So there's our... Okay, so welcome back there guys. We have you in the back room now. All our finds laid out for today. I really give you a look. Okay, so that is about it for us today, guys. We have you in the back room. We've got our coins laid out on the table, all cleaned up, ready to give you a look, and our trash in the container here. So I will say, too, uh, looking at here together, you know, the uh, the treasure and the trash ratio it was just spot on today. It was spectacular. Uh, look at the, uh, the uh, items in the container there, or the lack of items in the container. A uh, few bullets, a few pull tabs, the old car, a car bonnet up the front there, and what, two, three rusty nails. I think we did pretty bloody good so uh, let's not worry about the trash anyway it is nice to show and as I said the trash and treasure ratio was spot on target today so 1920 Commonwealth one penny beside that guy is the one that we took a bite of, uh, out of up the top there and 1912 one penny uh, we're going to jump past the silver coins there and next up is our last coin that we found uh, the beautiful 1955 half rue penny what a bloody ripper he needs a, uh, a bit better clean up on that side however he is in pretty good condition once the camera focuses there sorry about that uh, let's move down to the two dollar coins uh, two two dollar coins so that makes four and two one dollar coins makes six we are six dollars richer awesome stuff two two cent coins and two one cent coin to the right hand side there once again they will uh, also need a bit of a clean up too so and lastly are the silver coins my favorite as i said there too you know uh, the, tre the treasure and the trash ratio were just spot on target today so we almost dug as uh, many coins as what we did uh, trashy items so really really cool and who would have thought that we'd get six silver coins
including my favourite in the centre there, the early English threepence there, 1905. So 1926, sixpence beside that guy. And on the right hand side is the 1962 sixpence. So what a bloody cracker. Now below with that is the 1918 little threepence coat of arms and the 1943 wheat threepence. And beside that guy is the 1921. I'm very, very shaky, sorry. So anyway, guys, that is about it for us today. As I said, who would have thought we'd get six silver coins and even $6 richer uh, with only that little much, uh, that much uh, tra treasure, uh, trash, I should say,